Welcome to Movies on the Radio. This is one of my favorites. I did not license the rights to do this, and I'm looking forward to being sued. Go ahead, MPAA. I'll take you on in court just like Huey Long did. Did you hear that? What? The train. No, I didn't hear no train. Ah, oh, nothing, I guess. Well, where's the whistle stop on the map? I can't find it. Why did you tell me to turn right ten miles back there, then? God, you got a negative sense of direction, huh? I'm sorry. Oh, Ed, your aunt's going to be so disappointed we're late. I know she's been looking forward to this visit all week long. Bless her sweet little old heart. Hey, how's my sweet Auntie V this afternoon? Remember us? <laughs> don't you look pretty. Brought you something this morning. Oh, get that already look at you. Oh, don't, oh, you. Oh, don't you know that Evelyn loves you? Uh, honey, I guess it'd be better if you just wait out here for me or something. I'll get all this up. Well, if, if you think it's best. Yeah, I do this time, okay? Have a nice day, Aunt Vesta. Don't you pitch your fit like that. Did 
you know they took my gallbladder out? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, yes. Still in the hospital in a jar. I guess that's where they keep them. I guess. When I was in the hospital, the nurse gave me one of them fleet enemas this is fond of. Mrs. Cleo Threadgood, 82-year-old widow, imagine that. <laughs> Actually, everybody calls me Minnie. Of course, I'm just visiting here. Did you ever have one of them fleet animals? Um, well, no. You'd remember it. Me and my friend Mrs. Otis come from Whistle Stop. You ever been to Whistle Stop? Why, yes. I just passed by there today. She's lived down the street from me for, oh, 30 years or more. After her son died, her daughter-in-law had a fit for her to come live here at the nursing home, and they asked me to come with her and be a roommate. Mrs. Otis don't know it, but I'm going back home just soon she gets settled in good. <laughs> Did the name Itchy Thread good ring a bell? Um... No, ma'am. I don't think so. You'd remember her. <laughs> you see, I was practically adopted by the Threadgood family. I married a brother, Cleo. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Itchy and her friend Ruth ran the Whistle Stop Cafe. Oh. Itchy was a character, all right. <laughs> but how anybody could have thought she murdered that man is beyond me. I beg your pardon? What well, you sit and relax a while. I'll tell you all about it. Oh, now, let's see. Um, I remember the day they pulled that truck up out of the river. That same rainy summer day, Itchy Threadgood was arrested for the murder of the owner of that truck, Frank Bennett. I guess to understand Itchy, you'd have to start way back with her brother, Buddy. Itchy was Buddy's pet from the day she was born. <laughs> I remember the day we was all getting ready for Leona's wedding. The war had just ended. The great one, you know. And another one was about to begin in the Threadgood house. <laughs> Oh, buddy, buddy, get dressed, honey. Mama! Leona, what is it? Itchy's upstairs in her room, and she, she says she won't come out just as long as she lives. Mama, she is going to ruin my wedding. Shh. Why, Leona, you're going to be the most beautiful bride in Well, of course she is, Papa. Your Papa has spent every last nickel he has just to make you happy. Now, you try to act a little grateful, young lady. Imogen Louise Threadgood! This is your mama! You come down here right now. Do you hear me? Buddy, you go fetch her. She'll listen to you. Come on down a little bit. There's no firing squad waiting for you. Oh, come on, honey. Now let us see you. Oh, you look so pretty. I see London. I see... Hush. Julian, hush. Come ahead, sweetheart. You look awful nice in that. Mama! You look just fine, Iggy. She looks like a monkey. Julian, stop it right this second. Take it back! Take it back! Hey, hey, hey! I'm talking! She's going to ruin my wedding! I'm talking! Take it back! 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 Know that we have to be careful with you, Leona. Leona, will you stop shrieking, honey? This is your wedding day. Ah. Looks like you got yourself up a tree a little bit. I'm sick of people making fun of me. <laughs> so you're going to stay up here all day long? Yep. The hell with them. Who wants to wear that stupid old dress anyway? Did I ever tell you about the oysters? Oysters? 
tell you about the oysters? No. Think about all the millions of oysters just lying around on the bottom of the ocean. And then one day, God comes along, he sees one, he says, I think I'm gonna make that one different. And you know what he does? He puts a little piece of sand in it. Now guess what it can do that the others can't? What? It can make a beautiful pearl. What if God made a mistake? Well, the way I figure it, he never makes mistakes. I mean, he made sure we got together. He made sure you got the best looking, most charming brother in the world. Who's gonna beat you to the chocolate cake? You will not. <sighs> got you out of the tree now, didn't I? Did not. Into this estate, these two people come now to be joined. If any man present can show cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him speak now or forever after hold his peace. Please be seated. If either of you know any reason why you may not justly be joined together in holy matrimony, do you now confess it? It is in your will to proceed. Do you, Charles Osgood, justice? Thank you. I don't know what we'd do without your generosity. It's a kind. Sipsy, honey, especially you. Oh, Look what you've welcome, done. Welcome, Miss Threadgood. Give me the rascal, you. I don't think there ever was a sweeter boy than Buddy Threadgood. You look beautiful today, Lily. Lily, you should do. I had the biggest crush on him. <laughs> he was a terrible flirt. But his heart belonged to Ruth Jameson. Now, she was the daughter of a friend of his mama's who was visited that summer. Ruth Jameson, you're just the one I've been looking for. Are you thirsty? Let's go visit someplace else. I think that's a big lake. You should have seen the one next to our house. We used to swim in it and fish. I sure do miss it. Sure do. Well, what happened to it? Did it dry up? No, worse than that. See, last fall, a big flock of ducks, about 40 or 50 of them, landed right smack in the middle of it. And while they were sitting there, this fluke thing happened. See, the temperature dropped so fast that the whole lake froze. In three seconds, just like that. Oh, those poor little ducks. Did it kill them? No, oh, they flew off and took the lake with them. Why, to this very day, that lake is somewhere over in Georgia. <sighs> Buddy, red good. Get out of here. Buddy! 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 Buddy
Bonnie! Bonnie! Come on, you gotta go back to the house. Don't be home. You cannot go there. Come on, we're gonna go home. Bonnie! 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 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Oh, it like to have killed us all. But nearly one took it as hard as Itzy. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name. Everyone thought she'd die right along with him. She stayed by the river. Big George was the only soul she let near her, and he watched over her night and day. You know, a heart can be broken, but it still keeps a beating just the same. Oh, Miss Iggy, you'll have to keep this blanket on. You won't catch a death of cold, you hear me now? That's so sad. One of these. Oh, thank you, honey. Evelyn, e Evelyn, honey, we gotta get going. The Braves game is fixing to start, and you're gonna miss your thing. Excuse me, that's my husband, Ed. Hi, ma'am. How you doing? Um, I can't believe Buddy died. Neither could I. Oh, well. I enjoyed talking to you, honey. What's your name? Um, Evelyn. Evelyn Couch. I've got to go. You come back and see me, you hear? Okay. Bye-bye. Well, first of all, I want you to truly dedicate yourselves to finding little ways to putting that magic, that spark, back into your marriage. When we think of romance and marriage, what is the first thought that comes into your mind? Divorce. Remember when marriage counselors used to tell you to wrap yourself in cellophane to put a little charge into your marriage? Do we really pay for these lectures? So you can see, it is truly up to you to put that romance. Evelyn, are you going insane? Oh my God, people can see you. What if I'd have been a paper boy or something, honey? Get, get in there. What are you thinking about? Evelyn. Evelyn? Oh, you know, what we really need instead of this baloney is an assertiveness training class for Southern women. But that's a contradiction in terms, isn't it? Especially you, sweetheart. You're living in the dark ages. The roots of love grow all around. But for me, they come tumbling down. Every day, heartaches grow a little taller. I can't stand this pain much longer. I need one of those. Mmm, smooth too. I need one of these. Oh, this looks good. Yes, indeedy. Ed? Why don't you come in and sit down at the table and have dinner with me? I'm sorry, honey. The game's almost over. I just want to see a little bit of it. Why are you so dressed up? Honey, don't get in the way there. Just scoot over just a bit. <sighs> Ed, if I'd answered the door wearing only cellophane, would you still be watching the baseball game? 
No, honey, I'll probably be checking you into a loony bin. Sugar, have my little dumpling. Now you're not gonna go throw one of them hissy fits, are you? No, 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 no,
I'm afraid you're gonna have to excuse Edgy. She's gone home for dinner. Hey, nice meeting going? you. Say goodbye, Edgy. Where the hell are you going with my money? We're going home. Who are you to boss me around? I'm not just holding your money. That's who. Give it back. Now get in the car. All right, get in the car. You win. Come on. Sucker. <laughs> I leave here when I want to. I just don't know how you can break your mother's heart like you do. I'm not doing anything to my mother. Oh, no? Why no. do you think I'm over here for the summer? I your mother was so know. worried about you, she thought I might be able to try to talk some sense into you. But you're too busy being selfish. What are you talking about? Edgy, you're not the only one who lost, buddy. We all miss him, but turning your back on your family is not going to help. What's he got to do with anything? Looks like you're the one with the problem forgetting my brother. Why, just ten miles away, down by the river, there lurks a den of the devil. Where liquor and gambling and sin abide. Snakes and serpents. Hey, Scroggy, you're finally preaching about something you're kidding to. Snakes! <laughs> As I said, snakes and serpents take many disguises. Let's turn to page 53 in our hymnal. Back out now. It's not too late. I'm sure. Here, hold, hold this. <laughs> Tell me now, you like trains? Ye yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll get along just fine. Boy, we look out tonight. Hop in. your foot up there. Hold that. <laughs> Look at all this. Why do you think we should get off the train? Start in a move. No, fun to start. You all right? Well, sometimes I get a little dizzy looking down. Don't look down.
jump the next stop five miles down the tracks. I don't want to walk that far back. Are you crazy? You're not kidding. Well, <laughs> I give up. Jump. I'll tell Mama I'm not a good influence on you. You'll never jump, will you? Don't say never to me. Better get you to a doc doctor. Which way is it? About two miles down the tracks. All right, let's go. You'll never be able to carry me that far. I know. N never say never. I'm not carrying you. You're walking. Thank you, Julian. You want. Oh. Uh. Aren't you ready yet? Oh, what? Uh. <laughs> this doesn't have anything to do with trains, does it? You like honey? Oh, yeah, I like honey. Fresh honey? Yeah. Me too. There it is. Now what is? <laughs> You'll see. Soon enough. Now, stay here. No matter what happens, don't move. What are you gonna do? Oh, my damn, this is for you. What? Why did you do that? He could have been killed. I'm sorry. Don't you want the honey? Got it just for you. It's all right. I do it all the time. I never get stung. Honest. Don't be mad at me, Ruth. Oh, I'm not mad at you. No fooling. Is it bad what I did? No. I thought it might be crazy or something. No, no. No, I've heard there were people who could charm bees. I've just never seen it done before today. You're just a bee charmer. Is your thread good? That's what you are. A bee charmer. Hey, you want to taste it? <laughs> it 
Satan started to laugh at Job's devotion. He bet God that Job would never have so much faith if he didn't have so many blessings. And he went on and on, so long and so much, that God finally agreed to let Satan put Job to a test. Well, suddenly, from the being on top of the world, Job was plunged down into the deepest pits of misery. Good. Now, tonight we're going to have a real party. Drink this, and then we're going to play some poker. Well, I don't, I don't know how to play poker, and I never drink, but thank you anyway. What about we Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Here comes the wind up now. Here comes the wind up. Burn that ball in here. Burn him in here. Burn him in here. Right in the pocket. Right in the pocket. I, I don't know how to bat. And you don't drink All right, either. Now. Just, just, gonna be a spitter. Hold the bag. Gonna be a swing. I'll pitch it easy to you. Spitter? She gonna spit at me? No, she's gonna spit on the ball. Bring that bag. Take another crack. Take another crack. Take another crack. Get him in here. Get him in here. Get him in. Get him in. Uh-huh. Get him in. Get him in. Get him in. Get him Never had so much fun in my whole life. And I even got a home run. The clean one at that. Straight beats three of a kind. <laughs> you know, poker isn't half bad. <laughs> oh, Izzy, what's your mother gonna say when she sees us both drunk? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop worrying about what people think. I mean, you've always done the right thing. You took care of your daddy, the preacher, when he took sick. You take care of all the kids over at the church school. You're gonna take care of your mama. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I'm gonna marry the man I'm supposed to. You're getting married? As soon as the summer's over. <gasps> <sighs> Oh, I'm gonna miss you. This is the best birthday I ever had. Ruth invited Itchy to the wedding, but Itchy never did write back. No. But she did drive all night to Valdosta, Georgia, to watch from afar. Whoa! Here we go. <laughs> Ruth James and then she swore this. she'd never see Ruth again. weeks, we will be learning to reclaim our own power as women. Hallelujah. And tonight, we're going to begin to explore our own femaleness by examining the source of our strength and our separateness, our vaginas. So if y'all will just slip off your panties now and straddle your mirrors. Oh, I'm so sorry. Miss Couch. Miss Couch. Um, I need to be excused for a minute. Um, Missy, could you come with me to the ladies' room? Do you find this threatening? Uh, well, um... Do you have a problem with your sexuality? Uh, no, ma'am, but, um... I do have a problem with my girdle. <laughs> Cherish is the word I used to describe. All the feelings that I Hi, baby. All right, fried chicken.
Ed. Something good for you. Ed. Those classes I've been taking forever aren't helping us one bit. Let's go to Florida. Like when we got married. Kyle's gone. Busy with his own life. Be just the two of us. Well, honey, it's just the two of us here now. Boy, you got a good scald on that chicken. Mm, I'm telling you, it's really good. <laughs> Thank you. We could rent a boat and drift around in the hot sun. What do you think about it? Well, I'm just getting used to it being quiet around here. Well, honey, if those classes aren't doing you any good, then don't go to them. Everyone needs a miracle in their life. Damn. Game is wiped out. Change the ordinary. He's just going to try to help. Ooh, is thread good? Hey, Evelyn. Do you like it? Ooh. Well, uh, uh, who did it for you, darling? Well, believe it or not, it was a student, a little bitty thing, no bigger than a midget from the beauty college. <laughs> Sometimes they come out here and do our hair for free, just for the practice, you know. Is Ed with you? Oh, um, no, ma'am. Oh. His aunt said she didn't want visitors anymore, especially us. It's a shame. I know he feels bad, but Lord, if he'll talk to me about it. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Mr. Ed Good. How about telling me some more about Edgy? Oh, well, now let me see. Uh, where were we? Uh, Ruth had just gotten married to, to Frank Bennett. Wasn't that the man Edgy was arrested for murdering? That's right. After Ruth left, Itchy just went back to her old ways. Hanging out with Grady and the boys at the River Club. But after a few years, temptation got the better of her. I don't want to wake you, Miss Itchy. It's all day drive to Valdosa. And your mama said if you're going there, she wants you to take this here pad of Miss Ruth. Uh, she know where I'm going. She knows because I told her. Don't you go stirring up no trouble for Miss Ruth now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, me. And you can stay in my house as long as you want to, but don't you try to treat me like you treat your mom. Mama! Yes, ma'am. Hey, Miss Uh, you just tell her it's the beach armor from Alabama. Ruth, there's some big person here to see you. Things and all. Thank you. Uh, Mama said to give you this pie. So. Ain't you thread cut? How are you? You look so. So grown up. <laughs> all the guys must be wild about you. Tell me. Do you have a fella yet? Ah, uh, couple. I haven't decided on any. Grady's the most persistent. Grady kill go off? Don't say it so loud. Ruth, honey, who's down there? Hey. What? What happened to you? Nothing. 
<laughs> Nothing. Where'd you get the shiner? Oh, I'm... Listen, I think you better leave now. Did he hit you? N no. Did he beat you? Is he? Somebody's no. got to talk to him. Somebody's got to stand up to him. I'm going to kill him. No, no. I'm going to have a little conversation with him no. about You're not picking on somebody who's on the side. You're not going to do anything, you understand? If you care about me, if you really do, you'll turn around and leave this minute. You understand? Well, what she want? Nothing. <laughs> Ruth's a grown woman, and she knows what's best for her. Mm. I'm so sure about that. Yeah, Jesus. Grady, hi. Did you? Will you dance with me? No. Oh, come on, it's just only a dance. <clears throat> Miss Iggy Thread Good, get your butt off. will oh, you dance with me? <laughs> I will not dance with you, and I will not marry you. Go marry Gladys Moe. She just adores you. But she did fall on the head when she was just a child. You're just a goofy girl, is you, Fred Good? A goofy girl. Call ah, a goof. Ah, ah, ah. Will you call a goof? Now, now, you stop that before I get mad and I hurt you. Oh, yeah, try it. Oh, oh, oh. Grady! There, now, you give up. No, I'll never give up. Grady finally got dizzy and give up. Try as they might, none of them fellas at Eva's River Club could tame Edgy. <laughs> now, a little while later, a letter come from Ruth. Oh, that's an obituary. Oh, no, honey, Ruth's mother died. Oh. And this is from the Bible, it's from the book of Ruth. And Ruth said, Whither thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. Wait out here for a minute. Mom and Dad. I know. And I'm pregnant. seen anybody with so many hats. Why don't we put three in one box? I don't think we can fit all these in the car. You're gonna need a separate truck for all your stuff. What the hell is going on here? Looks like your wife's leaving you, mister. I'm uh, sure she is. Hey, don't, don't you touch her. Let go. You might upset Big George, and uh, he's crazy. There's no telling what he might do.
Go on, get out of here. Hell scared him, didn't I? Yeah, you sure scared him. Tawanda! The amazing Amazon woman! Tawanda? Tawanda! Tawanda! Evelyn. Evelyn? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just looking at the pictures, Missy. They have the greatest stories in that magazine, don't they? Oh, well, I'll see you in group tonight. We'll be talking about masturbation. Oh, no, I don't think so. I think I've had enough learning for the time being. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Screw you. Excuse me, young man. There was no reason for you to be so rude to me back there. Away from me, you fat cow. What did you call me? Beat it, you old bitch. Why are you being so mean to me? What did I ever do to you? I don't understand. <laughs> Look at my stove top. The world is the matter. I don't know. <laughs> Come on. Come on, I need some exercise. <laughs> you tell me what's bothering you, sugar. I just. <laughs> This feels so useless, so so powerless. Everybody goes through that, but I can't stop eating. Every day I try and try, and every day I go off. I hide candy bars all over the house. What well, candy bar ain't gonna hurt you none? One, no, but ten or eleven. I can't even look at my own vagina. Well, now, honey, I can't help you on that one. I wish I had the courage to just get it over with and get really fat. Oh, Miss Threadgood, I just... I'm too young to be old, and I'm too old to be young. Maybe I'm just going crazy. You getting hot flashes. Sometimes you get the sweats and your heart starts to pound it. How did you know? Simple, honey. You're going through the change. <laughs> <laughs> I used to burst into tears for no reason at all. <laughs> you need some hormones. <laughs> Maybe some of them stressed to have some before for good measure. Really? Is that all? Sure, honey. You get yourself some hormones. And then you get out of the house and get a job. <laughs> Why, with your pretty complexion, I'll bet you'll be just great with cosmetics. <laughs> I know how you feel. I was about your age when I had my child, and then I went through the change of life. I didn't know you had a child. Oh, yes, I did. Albert. When he was born, the doctor said it would be best if I didn't see him at all. He said his mind would never develop past the age of five, and 
I should just put him in an institution because the burden of raising a child like that would be too great. Well, I thought about Ruth. She always said there was a separate God for children. So I just smiled at him and I, I asked for the baby. Oh, how could anybody think that sweet, precious baby could ever be a burden? Why, from the minute he was born, Albert was the joy of my life, the Lord's greatest gift. I don't believe there was a purer soul ever lived on this earth. I had him with me till he was 30. And then he went to sleep and didn't wake up. Sometimes I can't wait to get to heaven to see him again. Itty always did have a way with words around the Reverend Scroggins. Well, Ruth had a baby. She named him Buddy, Buddy Junior. And Papa went out and borrowed money so Ruth and Itty could start a cafe. The Whistle Stop Cafe. When you come by my house, come down behind the door. I've got a sign on my door, barbecue for sale. I'm talking about barbecue. Only thing I crave. And a good doing me would carry me to my grave. I'm selling it for cheap. Cause I got good stuff. And if you try one time, boy, you can't. Uh, Miss Ruth, me and the Mrs. Shield, we want to thank you for sending that soup over to us last night. I'll pay you when I get ahead. Oh, you don't owe me a thing, Elsie. Thank you, ma'am. I'm just glad they're better. How is this, by the way? Oh, this is good. Oh, it's good. Happy to see you. Thanks. Can't go on, Iggy. I'm talking to you as a friend now, Iggy. There's some people in this town, and they's paying customers too, but I won't say no. But there are some people don't like you selling the colors. Here you go. Well, listen, Granny, I'll tell you what, the next time those some people come in here, I'm going to ask them if they don't want anybody to know who they are under those sheets they wear when they go marching around in one of those stupid parades you boys have. How come they don't have enough sense to change their shoes? Now you just hold on there. No, y'all ain't fooling anybody, Grady. But I, I recognize those size 14 clod hoppers you got anywhere. Just a minute now, A.G. Would you like some roll pie, Grady? No, thank you, Ruth. A.G., I'll talk to the boys. But you just keep them on out back there, you hear? Bye, Ruth. Bye, Grady. You're going to get yourself in a whole heap of trouble. Grady, he's homeless. Oh, you should have seen that big ox down by the river. Three solid days, drunk as a dog, crying like a baby. Because, Joe, that old colored man raised him to die. Remember that, Simpson? Yes, sir. But he sure ain't drunken now, is he, son? No, man. Don't even sit in the same room and have a meal today. Oh, it don't make no kind of sense. Big old ox like Grady won't sit next to a colored child. But he eats eggs. Shoot right out of chicken's ass. <laughs> Come on, Smokey, let's go for a walk. Sorry about spilling my food in there, ma'am. Uh, I'll just head on. Are 
Do you see that piece of land over there? That used to be a lake. Yeah. And then this one November, all these ducks come by, and they landed on that lake. And then the temperature dropped so fast, the whole lake just froze. And then the ducks took off and took the lake with them. Now that lake's somewhere over in Georgia. That's the way I hear it. Oh, now. God bless you, ma'am. The truth. Them. They're terrible. Oh, no. Well. <laughs> so don't be shy. Tell me how you feel. I will. Do that for. I just thought you needed a little cooler now. You're all right. Christmas, are you two doing? You trying to teach me how to cook. <laughs> Look at those bright green tomatoes. <laughs> you better stop this. I'm gonna have to arrest you for disorderly con. Oh, I'll arrest us then. Let me handle this. All right. <laughs> Ready. Oh, you're getting very nice. Come out. Arrest us. Go ahead, arrest us. Uh, uh, uh. Ruth, I have to say, I believe it just been a bad influence on me. I agree. <laughs> Don't wanna hear you weep when I'm gone. Don't wanna hear you weep when I'm gone. Dig my grave, Lord. Dig my grave. <laughs> show going till then. We ain't going nowhere. Down again, she still going. Where's the baby? Who are you? What do you want? Frank. Get out of here. Get out of here. Come on, get out of here and leave us alone. Come on now, Ruth. You wouldn't deny our father the right to see his own son, would you? You may not see. Did you? Damn. You got to see it go. Well, that's my boy, isn't it?
everything all right now? Our guest is just leaving. Come on, Frank. Let's go. I'll be back. And then you and the baby gonna be back. I scared you. No, sir. You should be. Think of you staying out late and losing all your money to me and poker night after night. She likes it just fine. They got Big George. Did you? They got him. Edgy, you let me handle this now. We see now you treat your niggers around here and we don't like it. Well, I'm the law in these here parts. And I really don't care what you like or you don't like. Now you turn him loose. Now don't get all riled up, nigger lover. You deaf or something? I said let him go. Boy, you get yourselves in a whole lot of trouble. Now calm down. We just wanted to have a little get-together and make sure we see eye to eye on some things. You hear me now? now let's let him go, boys. People had enough fun for one night. All right, turn him loose. Come on. No decision. You gonna get in trouble. Well, now, that's more like it. Seems I don't recognize any of you, boy. You all ain't from Whistle Stop, are you? He saw to do it. I want to thank you, Miss Edgy. Forget it. You'd have done the same for me. Mm-hmm. I try to get some sleep. Mm-hmm. Who the hell were those assholes? They's just some old boys from Georgia come over here to put a little scare in you. Well, old war. One of them was over here the other day for something, Mother. Seen you selling food to coloreds. He decided to come back and shake you up a little bit. I told him we don't need anybody from Georgia coming over here telling us what we can or cannot do. They won't be back. I can guarantee you that. One other thing, little Miss Smarty Pants. I do not wear a size 14 shoe. And I don't much care for parades, bed sheets, or otherwise. Hey. What's the matter? It was Frank. He saw the baby. You sure it was him? Yes, I'm sure. So that's why those clutches were here. Let me take him. Don't worry. I mean, if he's dumb enough to come back here again, Grady and the Alabama boys will take care of him. <laughs> and if they don't, I'll think of something. <laughs> don't take any chances. Promise me you won't do anything crazy, no matter what. Me? Not me. Let me put him down. Hey, little buddy. That was the last anyone saw of Frank Bennett until the night of the town follies. Ruth was away at one of the Reverend Scroggins' many revivals. One thing a woman expects when she gets married is sympathy. Well, haven't you got that since you married me? I sure have. From the whole town.
CJ, you got to come quick. Look, the show's hardly begun. You got to come quick now. You hear me? Not a bad man, get him! Where's the baby? Never mind. Excuse me, sir. I don't believe you should be going anywhere with Ruth Bates. Hi there. He's over here from Georgia. Oh. And he's looking for a fellow. Do you recognize him? No. That's my husband. But I haven't seen him in months. Oh, I, I heard he got run over by a Brinks armored truck. <laughs> what's he done? Nothing that we know of. We're trying to find out what's been did to him. He told his hired man he was coming over here to see his wife and baby, but he ain't never showed up back home. Hell, I told him if he showed up in this town, we'd all have known. Looks a little sissified to me. From what I hear, most of you boys over there in Georgia are a little light on your feet. That's the way I heard it. Could I interest you in some pie? No, ma'am. But that barbecue sure smells good. Best damn barbecue in the state of Alabama. I swear you're about to eat up all my barbecue. Sit down. Sit down. You ain't fooling me, girly girl. I know who you are. I heard from Bennett's hired hand that you threatened to kill Frank Bennett. Now, he ain't showed up dead yet. But if he does, you're in a whole mess of trouble. You understand? What we talking about is murder here. Running afoul of the law and don't nobody get away with that. Not even a bunch of Alabama smart alecks. Now, if I find so much as a half his head, I'll arrest you fast and you can slap a tick. Because I'm the law. And you can't beat the law. I told you, he said that was the best damn barbecue he ever had. That's all? No. What else? He said the pie was pretty good. Too. You sure you ain't never seen this man, boy? Yes, sir. I had already told you. I ain't never seen him. Well, you'd do anything for Miss Eiji now, wouldn't you, boy? Yes, sir. Would you kill for? 
Did you kill four? No, sir. Well, now, maybe one of these days you'll tell the truth. Just remember, we hang lying niggas in Georgia just as fast as they do in Alabama. Yes, sir. I remember. care of business, having a good time. I've been thinking maybe I should move on because of Frank and all. I just don't want you to feel like you have to look out for us. I just don't want to be selfish, that's all. Maybe if I wasn't here, you'd settle down I'm as settled as I ever hoped to be. Then why can't you tell me where you were? I had a dream the other night. I dreamt that Buddy was gone. I ran to his crib. There he was, sleeping like an angel. And you know, I thank God for letting me still have Buddy. And I remembered having the same reaction after Frank would beat me, thanking the Lord for giving me the strength to take it. And I remembered thanking the Lord for each day that my mother lived. Even when she was spitting up blood and praying for me to kill her. I looked in my mother's eyes, pleading for me to help her. And all I could do, I was praying. Wow. While you were gone, I was holding Buddy, I thought, if that bastard Frank Bennett ever tries to take my child, I won't pray. I'll break his neck. Ruth, you don't have to worry about Frank Bennett anymore. How can you say that? It's his child, too. He won't give up on his blood. I'm only gonna tell you this one time. Frank Bennett won't be bothering you no more. You understand? You killed him. Didn't you? No. don't believe me. Right now, I don't know what to believe. Believe me when I tell you I don't want you to move out. Finally. I like 
Thanks. Been out here all day. If I can show Uh, I was waiting for that space. Yeah? Tough. Face it, lady, we're younger and faster. <laughs> Tawanda. Avenger, and after I after I wipe out all the punks of this world, I'll take on the wife beaters like Frank Bennett and machine gun their genitals <laughs> to wandle on the rampage. I'll put tiny little bombs in Pit House and Playboy so they'll explode when you open them. And I'll ban all fashion models oh, weigh less than 130 pounds. <laughs> And I'll give half the military budget to people over 65 and declare wrinkles sexually desirable. To Wanda, writer of wrongs, queen beyond compare. How many of them hormones you taking, honey? I can't understand is how in the hell you could hit someone six times by accident. Oh, Ed, don't make such a big deal about it. What the hell is this? That's a low cholesterol meal. Happy Valentine's. God. Are you trying to kill me? If I was going to kill you, I'd use my hands. Stop in the name of love Before you break my heart Think it over Think it over I'm worried about my little friend Evelyn. She said her husband Ed would just be sitting around watching his sports on TV and she has an urge to hit him in the head with a baseball bat. Oh, hell, that seems normal to me. Hi, Janine. Mm -hmm. Hi, Miss Rigger. Would you like some crudite? Oh, thank you, Evelyn, but this raw stuff don't sit good with me. Miss Redgood, you have to tell me something. Did Iggy murder Frank Bennett or not? Well, hold your horses, honey. Where were we? You didn't kill Ed now, did you? Not yet. Oh, good. Anyway, five years have passed since Frank Bennett disappeared. And Smokey Lonesome been missing ever since that same terrible night. I remember the day when he showed up again. I got son. You're the spitting Emmy the road. But he's Redgood Jr. Nice to meet you, sir. Well, sir, Smokey Lonesome. 
Curtis Smoot was making one of his visits to Whistle Stop, Alabama, still hunting and pecking for any scrap of evidence about Frank Bennett's whereabouts. Who wants to begin? Oh, I do. I do. Thank you. All right, we'll begin on page five. Life has a funny way of working things out. Well, hey there. Smokey. Did you? Smokey Lonesome. Well, if it is an old home week. How are you? Well, I'm rattling, but I'm rolling. Well, what brings you to these parts? Smell a good cooking? Hey, Smokey. Dipsy. <laughs> well, let me fix you some lunch. Mm. I think you know just about everybody except maybe Curtis Smoot. He's an officer from over Valdosta, Georgia. He's been looking for the same man for almost five years. Very stubborn fellow. <laughs> he loves our barbecue. understand having a funeral for an arm. I just don't know why she insists on calling him Stump. Well, she said everybody else gonna be calling him that, so we might just well be the first. Okay, ice cream and cakes for everybody in the cafe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My daddy always used to say there was a separate God for children. The good Lord was watching over Stump that day. But then it started to rain that month. And it rained and it rained and it flooded parts of Whistlestop. And that's why Grady's deputy stumbled onto Frank Bennett's pickup truck. And I just knew Itchy would never get out of this mess. Now you're in or out. Remember, Ruth, I didn't take any calls. Look at me, Itchy Fred girl. Let me see your face. Did you have to talk Double to me? bluffing. Grady, why don't you sit in? I'll do you a new hand. Gladys won't mind. In private, Edgy. Excuse us, Ruth. Hi. I'm just trying to teach you not to fall for any trick. You're doing a great job. What's your hurry? And what is so important? Somebody found Frank Bennett's truck in the river. What's that got to do with me? Well, officially, you and Big George are under arrest for murder. You in my custody until tomorrow. I'm supposed to take you over to Georgia first thing in the morning. Unless, of course... Well, some people have been known to pack up and sneak out of town in the middle of the night. What about Big George? Well, the way I figured, they'd be satisfied if they had him. Did you, this is serious. You're talking murder of a white man. Someone's gonna have to pay. Nobody wants to hang a woman. <laughs> no deal. Now, did you, I know how you feel about Big George. Hell, we all do. But these just the facts of life. I can't do that. Take me to jail if you have to. Well, that's what I thought you'd say. Because you are absolutely, unconditionally, positively the most stubborn person I've ever known in my life. So Itchy and Big George went to the county jail in Valdosta to await trial for the murder of Frank Bennett. They didn't have to wait too long. Did you know Frank Bennett? No, sir. You mean to tell me you never met the man whose wife 
Ruth is your business partner? That's right. And you never threatened to kill Frank Bennett. At his home in front of his hired man in June of 1932, the same Frank Bennett you did not know. Oh, that was me, all right. <laughs> I thought you wanted to know if we'd ever met. The answer's no. Uh, I threatened to kill him, but we were never what you might say properly introduced. Is it not true that in September of 1932, you came to Valdosta and took Frank Bennett's wife and child back to Alabama with you? Mm, just the wife. The child came later. Oh, how much later? The usual nine months. Well, I suggest that you bribe this poor, weak woman with promises of liquor and money. And she lost control of her senses momentarily. And when her husband came back to get her and take her home, you and your colored man murdered him in cold blood. No, sir. Well, where were you on the night of September 30th, 1933? I was at the town hall doing a show. And after that? I was over at my mother's house. Oh, yeah? Who was with you? Just big Georgia and myself. What about your mother? Can she confirm that? No, sir. She died a year ago. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, but Miss Threadgood, you expect 12 intelligent men to believe you, although one witness is dead and the other is a colored man known to be a worthless, no good, lying nigga. You expect these men to take your word for it just because you say so? That's right, you gum-faced, blown-up, baboon-ass bastard. <laughs> One more outburst like that, and I'll hold you in contempt of court. You understand? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, Lord. Next witness, please. Did you know that you were pregnant at the time you left Valdosta? Yes. And yet, you tell us over and over that you went with this woman willingly. Yes, I wouldn't raise my child with Frank Bennett. But why? Did this woman promise you money? No. A bigger home? No. No. In church, Miss Bennett, why would a respectable Christian woman go anywhere with this busy bread? Did you leave with Itchy Threadgood that day? Answer the question, Mrs. Bennett. Because she... She's the best friend I ever had, and I love her. Thank you, Miss Bennett. That will be all. The defense calls as its last witness the Reverend Herbert Scroggins. Place your right hand on the Bible, please, Reverend. I brought my own, if you don't mind. You swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. You have information about the whereabouts of Edgy Threadgood and her colored man known as Big George on the night of September the 30th, 1933? Yes, sir, I do. Well, it has been suggested here that she and a colored man were at her mother's house. Can you confirm that? No, sir. That is a lie. Oh, shit. It has been my habit to write down all the dates of the activities of the church in my Bible. And I show that the night of September 30th, 1933, was the start of our annual revival down at the Baptist campground. Sister Threadgood was there, along with her hired man, George Pullman, who was in charge of the barbecue, just as he has been every year for the last 10 years. No objection. That doesn't mean anything. Murder could have taken place any time the next couple of days. Have you ever been to one of our revivals, sir? Well, no. Do you attend church regularly, sir? Of course I do. Good. Well, maybe if you attended one of our revivals, 
you'd know they last three days and three nights in your honor. Approach the bench. Percy, it don't look like you got a case at all. In the first place, there's no body. Second, we got us a preacher nobody's going to dispute. But your honor, I'm telling you what you got is a whole lot of nothing. I say Frank Bennett got himself drunk, drove into the river, and was long ago eaten up, and I don't give a good goddamn. What we got us here is a case of accidental death. Case dismissed. See you in church, sister. Reverend. I can't believe he actually swore on the Bible. Well, not really. If that judge had looked any closer, he'd have seen it was really a copy of Moby Dick. <laughs> but why did he do it? Well, I'm sure, Joe, I've seen you in church again, which I suggested to him might be your penance. You didn't promise him. Yes, ma'am, I did, and I'll never break my word. If I live a thousand years, I will never forgive you for this. I don't know what's worse, church or jail. There now. Don't you look pretty? Oh, yes, honey. You'll have me looking like Ginger Rogers before you're done. <laughs> well, don't let Mr. Dunaway see me. He's liable to go wild. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're in a good mood. <laughs> and you've slimmed down quite a bit in the last few weeks. I'm just so happy Big George and Iggy got off. And I would have killed Frank Bennett if I could have. Did anybody really think she did it? Some said yes, some said no. Of course, the only one who really knew was Frank Bennett. And you know what they say. Dead men tell no tales. <laughs> to what? What in the hell are you doing? I need some light and air. Well, why don't you step outside and take one of your walks or your jog or whatever it is you do? There's no dinner either. Ed, you have any idea why I've been going to all these classes? No. I've been trying to save our marriage. What's the point of my trying if you're going to just sit on your butt drinking beer and watching baseball? Basketball, football, bowling, and hockey, and golf, and challenge of the gladiators. Mrs. Couch? I'm Sue, Mrs. Otis's daughter-in-law. Well, hey, how are you? I've heard so much about you from Miss Threadgood. Oh, she is so sweet. She's been looking after my mother-in-law for years now. Well, now, how is Miss Otis doing, by the way? Oh, much better, thank you. I guess it just takes some time getting used to a strange place. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I know Miss Threadgood's been anxious to get home for some time now. Mrs. Couch, Mrs. Threadgood doesn't have a house anymore. They tore that down. What? Well, they had to. It was falling apart, and it was condemned. Oh, no. Does she know that? No, well, we didn't see any point in telling her. It would just break her heart, poor old thing. But I am so glad I got a chance to meet you. You take care of yourself now. Bye-bye.
Franklin, hey. Hey. <laughs> Do you like my roses? <laughs> Since I can't get home to look at my own roses, I made myself a paper garden. Got everything but the bugs. They're lovely. You been here long? Happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't have woken you up. Of course you should have. Don't you never let me sleep through a visitor's day, honey. I look forward to them all week. So do I, Miss Threadgood. So do I. <gasps> oh, I can't believe you remembered and you made me fry green tomatoes. <laughs> It's your recipe. Are they cold? No, they're just the way we used to have them at the Whistle Shop Cafe. Mm. You mm. couldn't be sweeter to me if it's my own daughter. Thank you, Napkin. Queen. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't feel 83. Sort of slipped up on me. <laughs> I never expected to live this long. Of course, the Lord takes us home when he wants us. Are you all right? I was thinking about Ruth. After the trial was over, Everything went back to normal till that fall when Ruth lost her appetite. By the time Doc Hadley looked at her, he said the cancer was so bad she only had a couple of weeks. Well, we moved her to the Threadgood house and put her downstairs so she'd be more comfortable. Sipsy moved in with her and never left her side. Itsy just prayed for a miracle. <laughs> now, listen to me. Make sure he graduates. Don't let him come to the funeral. I don't want him going through that mess. Would you quit talking like that? What funeral? He's going to be back on the feet, feeling just fine in just a few days. Did you wait? Oh, what's the matter, son? Let's go for a walk. Did you get into a fight? I punched the nose. I can't play like everyone else. Hey, did I ever tell you the story about the oysters? All the millions of them just lying around. And God put Santa in one of them and makes a pearl. Oh. Did I ever tell you about Eva's three-legged dog? How it never felt sorry for itself? How I'd be smart and dumb dog and not feel sorry for myself. You listen to everything I say, don't you? you? Get real mad at me when I don't. Well, you know about your mama. She's sick. Mm -hmm. See, now is the time for courage. I guess you already know that there are angels masquerading as people walking around this planet and your mom's the bravest one of those. Come here. I can hit. You should see me. Aunt Edgy, she hit me in the back with a curveball. I didn't duck and I'll hardly cry. She hit you. Well, she did that to me once too, but I think I did cry. <laughs> Mama, I'm sorry if you're sad. Well, K. 
Give me a big kiss then and I'll never be sad again. And you best not be sad neither. You understand? Promise? Promise. Bad boy. You can go and wash up. To be alone now. Hey, girl. Mm. Nice. Do you do one thing for me? Yeah, anything. Be good to yourself. Settle down if you can find someone who can beat you in the poker. <laughs> There's so many things I want to say to you. No. I love your stories. Tell me stories. On your beach, Emma. Tell me a good tall tale. Tell me the one about the lake. What lake? The one that used to be here. Oh. Well, that was just a lie. I know that, fool. Tell me anyway. Tell me the story. Uh, one time, there was this lake. And uh, it was right outside of town and we used to go fishing and uh, swimming and canoeing in it. And uh, see, one November, this big flight of ducks came in and landed on that lake. And uh, and then the temperature dropped so fast that the lake just froze right there. And, and the, uh, the ducks, they flew off, you see, and they took that lake with them. And uh, now they say that lake is somewhere over in Georgia. Miss Ruth was a lady, and a lady always knows when to leave. When I think 
upon our departed sister, Ruth Jameson, I'm reminded of our Lord's Sermon on the Mount and how his teachings were exemplified. It's funny how strong Ruth affected everyone. Even Smokey Lonesome. When he died a few years back, he had one possession on him. A picture of Ruth. He was in love with her from the first time he saw her. We all were. I shouldn't have told you this. I hate death. It scares me so. Death is nothing to be afraid of. Look at me, I'm at the jumping off place and I ain't afraid one bit. You're so brave. <laughs> Ruth and Izzy were brave, not me. <laughs> I wouldn't be afraid of death if I was you. I'd be more afraid of driving in rush hour traffic. <laughs> Sorry about the past few months, you know. I don't know what you're really up to, what's going on with you, but I guess I could have been more helpful with your job and everything, but, you know. Well, why are you, uh, why are you putting up this wall where you just tore one down? Well, I changed my mind. Well, I don't mean to seem dense or anything, but what's changed? The air and the light. Ed, hmm. you remember how you used to tell me you always wanted two women in your house? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what if I was the younger of the two? <laughs> I don't believe I get your drift. <laughs> I want something more than I've ever wanted anything before. I want to bring Mrs. Threadgood to our home. I want her to live here with us. I want to give her the love she's given me. <laughs> You're kidding me, aren't you? I'm absolutely serious. That's why I'm putting the wall to Cal's room back up. Well, honey, this isn't something you're just going to do. I mean, she's an old woman. What if she got sick or something? I mean, who who's going to take care of her? I will. I can't leave her in that place. She's not a... Stray cat or something else. She isn't even family. 
She's family to me. Oh, Evelyn. Evelyn. Honey. Uh, look. H have you mentioned this harebrained idea of yours to her? Not yet. Well, good. Then we'll just pretend it never happened. Well, I'm making my own money now. I'll pay for everything. You don't have to do a thing. Evelyn, <clears throat> it's never gonna happen. So just forget about it. Don't you ever say never to me. Someone helped put a mirror up in front of my face. And I didn't like what I saw one bit. And you know what I did? I changed. And that someone was Mrs. Threadgood. She needs my love and care now, and I'm going to give it to her. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go to the gym. And if you won't listen to reason, there's always Tawanda. Things. What are you doing in here? Where is Miss Threadgood? Who? Mrs. Threadgood, the woman who lives here. Are you deaf? I'm sorry, miss. All they told me was that the woman who lived in here died this morning. Oh, my God. What? What are you saying? Well, she died early this morning. They were shorthanded, so they asked me to take all this stuff down. That's all I know. They told me to get this room ready for another patient. Well, she may be just another patient to you, but she was my friend. And I love her. Sorry. I'm just following orders. What is going on here? Why um, didn't you call me? You could have at least called me before I'm you said that. Sorry, Miss Couch. It just never occurred to me that you would take it this hard. I didn't even get to tell her goodbye. Oh, I know these things are difficult, but she died peacefully in her sleep. Now, to tell you the truth, I thought you'd be happy for Miss Threadgood. Happy? Oh, yes, this is what she wanted. What, to be dead? No, to go home. You just missed her. She left here in a yellow cab about a half hour ago. I don't understand. What, a cab? Well, yeah, she said there wasn't no reason for her to stay now that Miss Otis had died. Mrs. Otis is dead? <laughs> oh, Mrs. Otis. Mrs. Otis died! Mrs. Otis! Oh, God! Mrs. Otis! Not that I'm... I'm glad that Mrs. Otis died. It's just... Oh, God, I've got to stop her. Evelyn, somebody stole my house. It was right here when I left. I left. Oh, Evelyn, you don't reckon I'm crazy, do you? It was here when I left. No, honey, you're not crazy. This is the place. 
Well, why would anyone want to steal an old lady's home? Well, worth nothing. Oh, honey. Nobody stole it. They had to tear it down. It was condemned. I'm sorry. I should have told you. <laughs> Somebody should have told me. I'm old. I'm, I'm not a child. I'm sorry. My husband, Cleo, and I lived in this house for more than 40 years. Now it's, it's gone. 83 years worth of living. And all that's left of me is what's in this box. Bunch of old cards and pictures. Come on. I'll take you home. This is my home. And now it's gone. And Mrs. Otis is gone. I, I, I don't quite know what to do. I, it's the first time I can remember when I don't have a soul to look after. You can come look after me and Ed. Oh, you're sweet, but... I think you're doing just fine on your own. Don't you know you'd be like a gift for us? You're the reason I get up every morning. And that Mary Kay's having such a good year. <laughs> and that I don't look like some blob from a horror movie. <laughs> well, with a little help from Iggy and Ruth. Come on. You got your room all ready. What does Ed say about all this? He'll learn to love it. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that Mrs. Otis was Sips's baby sister? No, ma'am. Yes, she was. Mrs. Otis was with Sipsy and me the night Sipsy died. Sipsy told me a story that night I've never told a living soul, Evelyn. A story about what really happened the night Frank Bennett disappeared. Excuse me, sir. I don't believe you should be going anywhere with Ruth Bates. <laughs> like I said, you ain't going nowhere. Damn, you a thick-headed son of a bitch, ain't you? <laughs> I told you you ain't going nowheres with Miss Ruth's baby. Come on, Angel. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. It's all right. Come on. It's all right, baby. It was self-defense. I know why any white jury would care why I did it. Well, I saw it, and I can test it. Uh, excuse me here. I don't mean no offense here, but I don't know who's less likely to convince the jury. <laughs> My mama or Mr. Smokey here. No offense taken. You're a good man, Mr. Smokey. You did good. The sun's almost up. George? Mm-hmm. I think... It's hog boiling time. Uh, no, ma'am. It ain't cold. Enough. It's hog boiling time. Hey, George. 
Uh-huh. When is that barbecue going to be ready? Oh, it's going to be ready any time now. Smells so damn good, I just can't wait to get me some. <laughs> now, don't you forget to call me when that's ready. All right. Go. Miss Iggy? Yeah. Smokey left town. Thought it'd be best under the circumstances. He asked that you tell Ruth goodbye. Shame he had to go. some barbecue. Oh, not today. You don't go on. Well, this is about the best barbecue I ever ate. The secret's in the sauce. Frying pan did more than fry chicken that night. Oh, did Iggy really barbecue Frank Bennett? Are you pulling my leg? Secrets in the sauce, or so I've been told. <laughs> now you know why Iggy had to go on trial. She knew the law would never believe Sipsy. No. Sipsy or Big George, anyone else of color would have been hanging from the nearest tree. Mm. To this day, I'm still not sure whether Ruth ever believed that Edgy didn't kill Frank Bennett. So it's a funny thing sometimes. <laughs> I feel better now. Good. I feel better because all these people will live as long as you remember them. You reminded me about what the most important thing in life is. Do you know what I think it is? No, ma'am. Friends. Best friends. Oh, Nanny. <laughs> Look. Oh. Iggy? Iggy's alive? Oh, yes. She's still out and about, charming bees and selling honey. Sometimes I think I catch a glimpse of her. Maybe we'll see her today. Maybe. <laughs> Let's go. After Ruth died and the railroad stopped running, the cafe shut down and everybody just scattered to the winds. It was never more than just a little knockabout place. But now that I look back on it, when that cafe closed, the heart of the town just stopped beating. It's funny how a little place like this brought so many people together.
make a difference. 